So, welcome student to the next class of introduction to nonlinear optics and its application. This is lecture number 30. So, in the previous class so we have learned something about the quasi phase matching mainly the calculation part. In quasi phase matching the important thing is that we have an arrangement where the value of d is periodically changing. Here the periodical periodically changing means the value the sign of d value is changing periodically from plus 1 to minus 1. So, now we will going to calculate and try to find out that once we have this kind of function in our hand how this can affect the evolution of the second harmonic and the phase that is created due to the phase mismatch which is a delta k term k2 minus 2 k1 how it is compensating that term that we will going to calculate today. So, today we have two topics to discuss one is calculation of quasi phase matching and second is realistic calculation of second harmonic generation. So, realistic calculation of the second harmonic generation is a different part that we will start today, but let us first find out what is uh, the quasi phase matching calculation. So, if you if we see that the quasi phase matching for quasi phase matching the d is now function of z that is the important part. The equation of second harmonic whatever the equation is written here in this slide is exactly the same that we have already derived previously. Only important inclusion here is now d is function of z that means there is a variation over G, d. If d is a periodic function then we know that d can be written as this form. We use this in the previous class dz can be represented in this particular form gm e to the power of i m k q z where m goes to minus infinity to infinity. Once we write this dz then readily we have an expression or the relation over d which suggests that over a period lambda d has the same value. Since we have this condition I can write d in this particular form we have already proved in the last class. If we use this value if we use this value here the value of uh, d then we can write in total it is gme to the power i k q minus delta k because of this minus i k term and z over sum. Now, once we have this I can expand this term as a function of m by changing the value of m. So, d 2 d d 2 d e 2 d z i d 0 omega c n 2 e 1 square this is the constant term and then I expand this term. So, first term if I put 0 this term will be 0 this term will be 0 to z 0 e to the power i delta k z that is some sort of term that we already had this is if there is no k q then we will get some term like this. Now, this from the second term the contribution of k q is there. So, if I put m equal to 1 we have k q plus delta k z. If I have k m equal to minus 1 I should have z of minus 1 e to the power i k q plus delta k z and so on. If I write what should be the term for m equal to 2 it should be g 2 e to the power of i 2 of k q minus delta k z what should be the term of m equal to 3? It is g 3 e to the power of i 3 k q minus delta k into z and so on. For the negative case I just put a negative sign here when I put a negative sign I need to put a negative sign. So, this negative sign and this negative sign I can take common then it should be minus of i 2 k q plus delta k z when m equal to minus 2 and so on. So, this term will go on. 
Okay, so the next slide, if I go, this is the expansion of uh, d e 2 d z. Now, the next step is to find out e 2 that is our goal, but before doing that I need to I need to uh, make some comment here or try to draw your attention that here in G 1 term we already have here in G 1 term we already have a phase which is k q minus delta k. This is the phase that already there. If I forget about uh, the uh, quasi phase matching term, if I write only the second harmonic generation term e to this differential equation term, it was initially i of d of omega divided by n 2 c e to the power e 1 square and the phase term was e to the power of minus of i delta k z. This was the term that we have without any kind of uh, periodicity d was only a constant term. So, the first contribution if I see the first contribution of this term is something like this, but here d 0 and z 0 are the two terms which is basically this d term slightly modified kind of d. But from the second term onwards what happened that we have a term in phase which is related to k q that means there is there is be the first case what was the phase matching delta k equal to 0 is the phase matching condition. But for the second case the phase matching condition appear when k q is equal to delta k that means phase matching condition is now with k q term. So, k q is included and then here also we have some sort of phase term, but k q equal to minus delta k is our phase matching. In the similar way if I go on with higher values of m, then the next higher order term is g 2 we which we have already shown that here the condition of phase matching is this. So, 2 k q minus delta k equal to 0 is our phase matching this is delta our phase matching. Well, so once we have this expansion the next thing is to integrate it. So, if I integrate we know what should be the value for the first case it is some sort of sin function. So, sin divided by sin delta k z divided by 2 delta k by 2 this is the whole term that we have already calculated. Second term we will have exactly the similar form only delta k will be replaced by k q minus delta k. So, we will have again have sign of these things and then okay, here we have a mistake it should be k q this z will be outside. So, here also this will be outside k q delta k multiplied by z. So, we will have a sign term also here and so on. After integration the next thing is what happened we will put our phase matching k q is equal to delta k that is a phase matching that is a quasi phase matching we call the first order quasi phase matching. So, when we put k q equal to delta k then you can see readily you can find that only the major contribution will come from this term. Here if I put k q equal to delta k this term will be sign of k q z by 2 divided by k q by 2. It will not going to get any high value because it is some sort of sine function or if I write in terms of k q it is a sing function. So, we know that the sing function got a maximum when this and these are 0 tends to 0, but here we find that it is not the case. What about the other terms the higher order terms? The higher order terms for example, if I write g minus 1 and put k q is equal to delta k, we eventually have a term e to the power of minus i 2 of in 
in in terms of sign after integration we will have a sign term so we will have g of 2 sin this term will be 2 k q and minus k so minus k will be represented by plus minus k q minus delta k is represented by minus k q so we will eventually have sin of k q divided by some term which is again k q so again we will find that this term will not going to vanish because k q is equal to delta k it is not zero only contribution we will have this and this term tends to zero this term tends to zero and this term tends to zero that means this term tends to one when we have k q is equal to delta k under that condition i can write e2 is approximately equal to i d0 omega c n2 e1 square which we have already have multiplied by the coefficient g1 and the limit at k q minus delta k tends to 0 this limit basically gives you z so we will have a z here now g1 is this because gm is equal to 2 divided by m pi sin m pi d so g1 can be represented in terms of this quantity so g1 is 2 pi if i put m equal to 1 it should be 2 divided by pi sin of pi d because m is 1 and now if i say my duty cycle d is equal to half then it should be 2 divided by pi because d half means sin of pi by 2 it is 1 so we have d half so if i now write this g1 and d0 together we will have an effective d this effective d is nothing but d0 divided by 2 pi so we can see that the first contribution which is containing g1 term in this case this d effective is less than d0 by a factor because d effective is d0 multiplied by 2 by pi and pi is 3.14 so that means we will have a quantity which is less than 1 that is multiplied to d0 so d0 is reduced a bit but we have still have a contribution and this contribution basically give rise to second harmony all the other contribution will not going to give any kind of phase matching so this term will die out very soon so only term that will be there is this so if i now try to find out what are the other possibilities of phase matching then kq equal to delta k is not only not only the one phase matching condition that one can have in this quasi phase matching but 2 kq is equal to delta k that is another one 3 kq is equal to delta k is another one so so on i will find the higher and higher order uh, phase matching but you have to be remember that if i for example we can have a system where 2 kq equal to delta k is our phase matching condition then which is the term that is responsible is our g2 now if i try to find out g2 with the duty cycle d is equal to half then g2 is what was our gm gm was 2 divided by m pi and then sin of m pi multiplied by the duty cycle d that was the form of gm now suppose we have second order phase matching for second order phase matching the value of m is 2 now i try to find out what is my g2 because g2 will be affecting on gen on generating uh, of the second harmonic so g2 will be 2 divided by 2 pi because m is 2 and then sin of 2 pi multiplied by d this first term 2 2 will cancel out so we will have 1 by pi sin of pi because d is half but sin of pi we know that this is 0 
sin of pi is 0 that means even though we have a second order phase matching condition we can have g2 but the contribution of the z2 is 0. So, second order phase matching the contribution of z2 is 0 that means we will not going to get any kind of second harmonic generation even the phase matching is there be careful about that because the coefficient g2 will going to vanish. Why it is vanishing that is interesting and it is vanishing because of the d value we are using this duty cycle equal to half but the duty cycle d is represented by l divided by big lambda. Now, if I say l divided by big lambda this ratio is 1 by 4 because this is in our hand then you can readily find that d is 1 by 4 and this value is pi by 2 and then again you start getting g2 because here the g2 is not equal to 0 but 1 by pi. So, in order to excite the second order quasi phase matching condition the important thing that you need to take care is the duty cycle. If you change the duty cycle there is a possibility that you will get g2 not equal to if you retain with the previous duty cycle that is half. So, with this periodicity what happened you will not going to get any kind of second order quasi phase matching even though the phase matching is there, but the effective contribution will be 0. So, next here we will going to conclude our uh, topic ok. So, before that we have something to say regarding the vector diagram. So, in vector diagram this is a collinear kind of phase matching if I write this vector diagram. So, you can readily see that k 2 uh, delta k is equal to k 2 minus 2 k 1 and if I write the first order it is k q minus delta k is equal to 0. So, delta k can be the, in the vector diagram can be represented is this and this k q is basically the vector which is associated because of the periodicity that is there because of the periodic d function. So, after that this is the end of uh, the study of quasi phase matching. So, now we will going to start a new topic which is uh, the realistic calculation of uh, uh, second harmonic generation. So, this realistic calculation was important because uh, in the realistic calculation we will not going to consider the electric field having the frequency omega or the fundamental electric field is constant because it is also changing we have two coupled equation. So, if I see this equation so let us go back to the equations. So, under phase matching condition delta k equal to 0 we have two equation in our hand if you remember both the equations are coupled to each other and in order to find out k2 initially what we we have done we take this e1 as a constant and then integrate when we integrate we find that e2 is proportional to z or the power is proportional to z square so when we put the efficiency curve it was like this but we also mentioned that this is not realistic so over z eta of z was something like this but we also mentioned that uh, this is uh, not the correct representation of uh, uh, this efficiency. So, we need to find out uh, the realistic calculation. So, now we will going to do that. In order to do that what we do is we divide the total electric field E 1 into two part one is amplitude part U 1 z and a phase part U e to the power i phi i phi z phi 1 z. So, both are now varying with z for e 2 also we will divide into amplitude and phase in this way. Once we have the amplitude and phase separately where u 1 and u 2 are the real quantity also phi 1 and phi 2 are the real quantity this complex amplitude we can always divide into e to the power i uh, r e to the power i theta form. So, here it is something like this. So, now we will have a derivative over E 1. So, when we make a derivative over E 1. So, since E 1 is represented by E 1 e to the power i phi 1. So, the derivative of E 1 and phi 1 can give this form d u 1 d z plus i u 1 d phi 1 d z e to the power i phi 1 and this quantity 
is in from the right hand side I write it is I d omega c n 1 and e 2 e 1 can also represent in term, terms of e 1 and e 2 u 1 and u 2 multiplied e to the power i phi 2 minus phi 1 because there is a star so that is why minus phi 1 is there. So, this phase is associated with that. So, in the left hand side we have d u 1 d z plus i u 1 d phi 1 d z i d omega c n 1 u 1 e 2 e to the power i theta z where theta is uh, phi 2 minus 2 phi 1 this is the phase difference between these two, but not the total phase difference. This is some quantity phi 2 minus 2 phi 1. The phase difference should be phi 2 minus phi 1, but 2 term is here. Now, the amplitude equation, we had an equation here. If you look carefully, this is our equation. So, this equation is a complex equation. So, in the left hand side, the real n complex. So, we know that if 2 x plus i y is equal to a plus i b, then we can write x is equal to a and y is equal to b. We will going to use the same thing, the real part of the left hand side will equal to real part and if we do, we will find this equation that d u 1 d z is equal to u 1 u 2 sin theta multiplied by d omega c n 1 and the imaginary part which is again equal and the e phase equation I will get this quantity. In the similar way, we can find the same thing for E2 and I will not going to explain the entire process because it is already there. So, I ask the student to do these things by yourself to find out uh, these two equation for E2 and you will find that you will get these two, all, all, all the calculations already there but I will still ask you to do that by yourself. This is a very straightforward calculation. So, real and imaginary part you can extract out from these two. So, after doing all this calculation, when we extract the amplitude and phase equation together, then the next thing we can do is to use this thing. Now, if we use that this uh, d omega c n 1 and d omega c n 2 are very, if n 1 and n 2 is very close to each other, we can write d omega c n 1 and d omega c n 2 very close to each other and we write as general coefficient kappa. So, when I do that, then we will find these things will reduce the calculation significantly. Now, two amplitude equation I can write d u 1 d z is equal to minus kappa u 1 u 2 sin theta and d u 2 d z is kappa u 1 square sin theta. This was the two amplitude equation. Mind it the term kappa is used in two different cases because d omega c n 1 we assume n 1 is very close to n 2. So, we assume that they might be same. For amplitude case also we have amplitude equation and this amplitude equation is u 1 d phi 1 d z is equal to k u 1 u 2 cos theta and u 2 d phi 2 d z is equal to kappa u 1 square cos theta. Now, we know theta is equal to phi 2 minus 2 phi 1. So, when we make a derivative of theta, we will have an additional term d phi 2 d z minus 2 d phi 1 d z. Phi 1 phi 2 we can have from here. When I use this phi 1 phi 2, we will have an expression of d theta which is u 1 square u 2 cos theta minus 2 kappa u 2 cos theta. Why we are doing all this calculation we will find in the right hand side basically because in the right hand side eventually we get one quantity which is conserved over the distance. That means it is not going to change. To figure out we need to use this methodology, this calculation. And in the Boyd book, this calculation is there. If somebody is interested, he or she can go to this book. But all the calculation is here in this slide. If you do this calculation by your own, then you will find that uh, it is not a very critical calculation. Rather, it is a lengthy, but it is not a, a very critical. It is a straightforward calculation. Next, we will find one very important quantity and that is log u 1 square u 2. 
when we try to find out log u1 square u2 if, if i make a derivative of z 1 u1 u2 is be there because i am making derivative so u1 square then the derivative of this quantity which is u1 square this plus the derivative of 2 u1 u2 so we will have this again we will going to use this du1 dz and du1 dz from this equation this two equation and we will find one expression like this if i simplify this equation we will eventually have one expression d dz is equal to log of u1 square u2 kappa sin theta divided by u2 and u1 square minus 2 u2 square now in the right hand side this quantity we already get here in terms of theta if i slightly manipulate this thing this cos theta and all these things i can write d cos theta by z divided by uh, if i put this cos theta here so 1 by cos theta will be this term and now sin theta is multiplied sin theta by cos theta d dz is equal to log of d dz of ln of u1 square u2 this two quantity this quantity can again be represented as log so minus of d dz ln cos theta should be equal to this quantity if you look carefully you can readily understand what is going on now if i combine these two the important very important expression that will come is d dz of ln u1 square u2 cos theta is equal to 0 that means u1 square u2 cos theta is equal to constant this is a very very important expression that we uh, end up that u1 u2 and cos theta both are varying independently because u1 is the amplitude of uh, the fundamental wave u2 is the amplitude of the second harmonic and theta is a difference between their angles uh, different between their phases but the phase directly it is not difference so theta is phi 2 minus 2 phi 1 phi 1 and phi 2 are their phases so theta is difference of this two quantity but they are also changing with respect to z that means theta should be a function of z so u1 u2 so if i now write u1 u2 cos theta is equal to constant so this means u1 which is a function of z u2 which is a function of z cos theta is a function of z is constant now if i put some boundary condition if i put some boundary condition e2 at z equal to 0 is 0 because at the beginning there was no second harmonic so that means u2 at z equal to 0 has to be 0 when u2 at z equal to 0 is 0 that means u1 z u2 z cos theta equal to 0 constant which is same as all the term at zero point so u1 0 u2 0 cos theta 0 that should be equal to that this quantity because it is a constant throughout the motion but now we find that this quantity this quantity is zero that means whatever the constant we are try to say is zero that means u1 square u2 u1 2 z u2 z and cos theta z is zero now again we find a very interesting outcome from this u1 and u2 u2 is 0 at z equal to 0 that is true but after that u2 is not equal to 0 u1 is also not equal to 0 this is multiplied by cos theta and this entire quantity is 0 it is only possible it is only possible when the theta has some relation so theta z which is phi 2 z 2 phi 1 z if this quantity is plus minus pi by 2 then only we can say that this is a valid equation so we find a valid equation here and this valid equation suggests that when they have a phase relationship so that means when the second harmonic is generating there is a phase relationship between the second harmonic and the fundamental wave and this phase has, uh, relationship is phi 2 minus 2 phi 1 is equal to plus minus pi by 2 so we will in the next class we will going to use this phase relationship to find out what is uh, uh, the parametric generation 
and all these issues will come. But important thing is this calculation is lengthy, but important thing is one quantity that is conserved during the propagation is u1 square u2 multiplied by cos theta and this cos theta is something where theta is represented by the phase of the fundamental and uh, second harmonic uh, wave. This phase relationship phi 2 minus 2 phi 1 and phi 2 minus 2 phi 1 this phase relationship is maintained throughout the distance. So, phi 2 minus 2 phi 1 is always plus by minus pi by 2 depending on the situation and then it is conserved throughout the propagation. So, we find a very important outcome today that one equation that is not changing and using that we will find out uh, what should be the amplitude and phase evolution over the distance and we will find in that case that it is not a z square dependency, but we have a realistic calculation. So, with this note let me conclude today's class. So, in the next class we will start from here and try to find out more about the second harmonic generation and how the second harmonic field will going to evolve under realistic condition that we will going to find using today's uh, uh, outcome. So, with that note let me conclude here, see you in the next class and thank you for your attention.